Python sets are highly useful to efficiently remove duplicate values from a collection and to perform common math operations like unions and intersections. And when it comes to dictionaries, they make it easier to read and change data, thereby rendering it more actionable for predictive modeling. Unlike other data types that hold only one value as an element, a Python dictionary holds a key value pair. Understanding this, we have come up with this video on Python sets and dictionaries. Now, before we go ahead with the session, I'd like to inform that we have launched a completely free platform called as Great Learning Academy, where you have access to free courses such as AI, cloud, and digital marketing. You can check out the details in the description below. So dictionary is an unordered collection of key value pairs enclosed within curly braces. And a dictionary again is mutable. So what exactly are key value pairs? Let's see an example of that. So over here we are creating a dictionary where we have two key value pairs. So the first key is apple, second key is orange. First value is 10, second value is 20. So you can also consider it this way. Let's say we have the name of the fruit and the cost of the fruit or maybe the quantity of the fruit. So we have apple and let's say there are 10 apples. Then we have orange and let's say there are 20 oranges and you will be separating the key with the value with this colon over here. Now, let me just delete all of this and let's start fresh for our dictionary. So instead of list, I'll just type in dictionary over here. And let's say I'll create this dictionary like this and I'll have um, let's say my first fruit is mango and i have 10 mangoes with me then i'll have apple and let's say i have 20 apples then i have lychee and i have 30 lychees and finally i would have strawberry and i would have 40 strawberries with me let me print out the result over here so this is our first dictionary which we have just created and just to ensure that we have actually created a dictionary let me check the type of it so type of root would tell us that this is of dict type which is basically a dictionary now once we have created a dictionary we can actually go ahead and extract the individual keys and values which are present over here so this is our dictionary and if you want to extract only the keys so this what you see on the left side of the colon, those are our keys. And if you want to extract only the keys, all you have to do is use the name of the dictionary, follow it up with the keys method, and we'll get all of the keys which are present in this dictionary. Similarly, if you want to extract all of the values, we would have to use the values method. So when I type in fruit.values, I am able to extract all of the values which are present over here. So I'll have fruit, which is a dictionary, which is already present. And if I want to extract all of the keys, I'll just go ahead and use the keys method. And as you guys see, I am able to extract all of the keys which are present. Similarly, if I want to extract the values, I'll type in fruit.values and I have extracted all of the values which are present. Now, since dictionary is mutable, we can modify it. So that would mean we can add a new element or we can change an existing element. So here we had only four elements, but if I want to add a fifth element, so here we don't have mango initially, but if I want to add mango, all I have to do is use the name of the dictionary, then inside parenthesis, I'll add the new key. So this is what you see inside parenthesis, I'm adding the new key and I'm adding the value to it. So here, as you guys see, I have attached this new key value pair at the end of this dictionary. Similarly, if I want to change an existing element, so initially the value of apple was 10. But if I want to change the value, then inside the parenthesis, I'll just give in the key and I'll assign a new value to it. So initially we had 10, now we have modified it to 100. Now we'll see how to add a new element. So I'll have fruit over here. Let me just print it out. We have four elements. Now let me add a new element inside this. So I'll have fruit. I'll have the square braces and let's say the new fruit which I'll be adding is guava and let's say I have 50 guavas with me 
and let me print out fruit right now and let's check the result so as you guys see we have attached this new key value pair at the end of this dictionary and finally let's see actually how can we modify an existing element so we've got let's see if i want to modify this particular key value pair so i have lychee and the value of lychee is 30 so i'll have fruit inside this so i'll give in the key which is lychee and i want to change 30 to 300 I'll just assign 300 to this and let me print this out. And as you guys see, initially the value was 30. I have successfully changed it to 100. Now we'll go ahead and work with some dictionary functions. So let's say if we have two dictionaries over here, we have fruit one and fruit two. So in fruit one, we have apple and orange and fruit two, we have banana and guava. And if I want to append the elements of fruit two to fruit one, or in other words, if you want to concatenate the fruit two values to fruit one, all we have to do is use the update method. So I have fruit one and I'll use update method and I'll pass in fruit two inside this. So as you guys see, we have appended banana and guava to the end of fruit one. Then similarly, we can go ahead and pop an element from a dictionary. So we can uh, so if we want to pop any key value pair, so inside the pop method, we would have to give in the key which we'd want to pop. So we had orange, but I don't really like oranges. So that is why I went ahead and I popped out orange. So as you guys see, orange is not present in this particular list. Now let's create two more dictionaries. I have fruit one and I'll have two fruits inside this. So I'll start with mango and I have 10 mangoes. Then I'll have apple and maybe I have 20 apples with me, then I'll have fruit two. And in fruit two, let's say I'll start off with guava and I have 30 guavas with me. Then going ahead, I'll have lychee and I'll have 40 lychees with me. So I have created these two dictionaries. So we have made a mistake over here. Let's actually check what this mistake is. So instead of the equal to operator, I'd have to give in colon over here. That is important. So I have created fruit one and fruit two. Let me print out fruit one and fruit two for your sake. And once we have printed these two, let me go ahead and actually append the values of fruit two to fruit one. So for this, I'd have to use fruit one. Then I'll use in the dot operator over here. And after that, I will use the update method and inside the update method, I'll be passing in fruit two. and let me print out. Let me close this first. Now, let me go ahead and print out fruit one. Now, as you guys see, I have appended the values of fruit two to fruit one. Now we have fruit one already, but let's say if I want to pop out something from this. So let's say from this, if I want to pop out the value of lychee, I'll have fruit one, then I'll use the pop method. So fruit one dot pop. So we have an error because we'd actually have to give a key inside this. So because I'd want to pop out lychee, I'll give in lychee over here and we have successfully popped out lychee from this. Now we'll head on to the last data structure in Python, which is set. So set is an unordered and unindexed collection of elements enclosed within square braces. So when we say unordered, so in whatever sequence you insert the elements in a set, those that particular order does not remain intact. And also when we say it is not indexed, you can't extract elements from a set with a particular index value because there is no proper ordering and also you'd have to keep in mind that in a set duplicates are not allowed so you can't have the same element twice but if you actually given the same element twice what happens is the set takes it only once and uh, we are creating one particular set over here and if you want to add a new element inside this so initially we are creating this set where we have all of these elements. So we have one, a, true, two, two, b, and false. And if I want to add a new element at the end of this or somewhere, so I'll just use s1.add and this is how we can 
insert the new element inside this. Now let's say if instead of adding just one particular element, if I want to add multiple elements at the same time. So instead of the add method, we'll be using the update method. And with the update method, I am passing in these list of values, which are 10, 20 and 30. And as you guys see, I have inserted 10, 20 and 30 inside this. But then again, you have to keep in mind that the order is not maintained in a set. So these are inserted randomly. And if you want to remove a particular element, you can just use the remove method and you will pass in the element that you'd want to remove. Again, since there is no indexing, you can't remove elements with an index value. You would have to give in the value which you'd want to remove explicitly. So let's create our first set. So I'll have S1. I'll just add some elements over here. I'll have A, B, C, D, E and F. Let me print out S1 for your reference. And this is what we have. Now, let's say I'll add some duplicates inside this and let's see what happens. So I'll have A repeating three times. Then I'll have B also repeating two times. Then I'll have C repeating two times. Now, if I print this out, as you guys see, we have only A, B, C, D, E and F. Even though A is repeating three times, we'll only have one unique value of A. Similarly, even though B and C are repeating two times, we'll only have one unique value of B. Now, if I want to go ahead and add a new element inside this, I'll use the add method. So s1.add and inside this, I'll just add Sparta. So when I use s1.sparta and when I print s1, so we have inserted Sparta over here. Similarly, if you want to pop out something or remove something, we will have to use the remove method. So I'll have s1 dot remove over here and inside this, let's say if I want to remove the element E, I'll just pass in E over here and let me print out s1 again. So we have successfully removed the element E from this entire set. Now we'll work with some set functions. So here we have two sets S1 and S2. In S1, we have the elements 1, 2 and 3. In S2, we have the elements A, B and C. Now, if we want to combine all of the elements which are present in S1 and S2, then we can use the union operator. So S1 dot union S2 will give us a union of S1 and S2. And as you guys see in the resultant, we have 1, 2, 3, A, B and C. Similarly, we have two sets over here and if we want only the common elements which are present in both of the sets. So here we have 1 to 6, here we have 5 to 9. If you want the common elements, I would use the intersection method. So when I use s1 dot intersection s2, you will see that we have 5 and 6 common in s1 and s2 and that is the result which we get. Let me have s1 over here. And in this, I'll have 1, 2, and 3. I'll have S2 in which I'll store 4, 5, and 6. Now, let me use the union operator. So, I'll have S1 dot union. And inside this, I'll be passing in S2. And as you guys see, I have appended 4, 5, 6 at the end of S1. Now, similarly, if I want to find out the common elements. So, let me make some modifications in S1. So, in S1, let's say I have from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then S2, let's say I have the elements 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And now, if I want to find out the common elements which are present in S1 and S2, I'll have S1 dot intersect and inside this I'll be passing in S2 and uh, we seem to have an error over here. So this has to be intersection and not intersect. Let me click on run. So as you guys see, by using the intersection operator, we have the common elements which are 4 and 5. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on Python sets and dictionaries. Now before I sign off, I'd like to inform that we have launched a completely free platform called Create Learning Academy, where you have access to free courses such as AI, cloud and digital marketing. So thank you very much for attending this session and have a great learning ahead.